Hey guys, how are we all? Welcome or welcome back to the Twister Bones podcast where each week I sit down and I read and react to a bunch of spooky, scary, horrifying and weird stories that range from ghost stories and the paranormal to real life encounters with creepy people or potentially dangerous people. So this is a perfect day to be recording a podcast episode. It's really stormy outside, it's super gloomy, so I'm curled up all cosy and I am so excited to read this story this week. So before I do get into it, I just want to quickly go over some housekeeping things like I do every single week. So firstly, I will always credit the people who wrote these stories. So all of the information will be in the description of each episode if you want to go and support those content creators. And finally, if you have your own scary story, so whether that be a real life encounter, so maybe with like a stalker or a real life person, a bit like the let's not meet story we read the other week or your own paranormal ghostly experience and you want it to feature in a future episode, please, please, please reach out to me. I would absolutely love to read it. So you can send your story over to me by either using the Facebook page, which is Twist the Bones Podcast, or you can email it to me using twistthebonespod at gmail.com. And finally, I do actually have a subreddit as well if you want to pop on over there and write your story out there. That is just Twist the Bones Podcast as well. And I'm pretty sure that's everything. So let's get into this week's story. So this is called Recycled Spirits, the Old Refrigerator of Doom and Stuff. Did you like the title? I thought that it was clever. This ghost story, or whatever you want to call it, has some laughs in it, particularly at my expense. There's definitely some spookiness to it though, so don't worry. It won't keep you up at night though, unless you're spending your nights trying to explain it away like I did. Now you're probably asking, explain what, damn it? So let's begin. A few years ago, I was a security guard, a night watchman as it were. If you read about real ghost stories or watch YouTube videos on the subject, then you've probably noticed that a lot of that stuff comes from security guards. I blame the internet and stupidity on night guards thinking everything is haunted. (laughs) In my six day work week, I guarded three different locations from 2pm to 12am, each of its own warnings of hauntings from my co-workers. No post was more notorious than the recycle yard that I watched on Fridays and Saturdays. By the time of my eerie encounter, I had already been at that post two days a week for six months. Countless guards had come and gone. Some asked for day shifts, others refused to continue the assignment, and a few quit outright. That was my most haunted place I'd heard of in my years as a night watchman. The stories were also the funniest. The motion detecting lights turn on, some guard would say, but when I go to look for who is there, nobody is there. Duh, that's because it was a recycle yard in the open air. There are cats and rats and birds and skunks and all sorts of suburban wildlife running around there at night. I saw a strange looking thing in there one night. It was like a man, but it was decrepit and sickly looking. It made weird noises. It was like a zombie. Yeah, welcome to Southern California, in the ghetto. That's a drug addict. It's a really big part of your job to keep them off the property. You didn't do your job very well. And my absolute favourite haunting scare, I didn't hear directly from one of my co-workers. I heard it from my boss. I got a call one Sunday, my only day off, and she asked me to cover the 10pm till 6am shift. The new guard quit her shift after one night because when the sun came up, the spooky ghost came out. The container started popping and everything made noises and there was nobody there and she cried and hid in her car to save herself from the evil spirits. (laughs) Let me remind you that this was a recycling yard. Metal was everywhere. The metal to be recycled was kept in containers that were themselves metal. Night is cooler, day is warmer. The sun rises, the metal expands and creaks and pops. I knew that. My boss knew that, but the now retired eight hour night watch veteran didn't know that. So I got stuck with a seven day work week. Well that Sunday night was a frightening one for me though. I remembered being in the car and on the phone with my boss pleading with her to just let me stay in my car. The company assigned had patrol tracking devices to every site and she called because I hadn't hit any of the checkpoints in over an hour. I was just refusing and she was threatening to fire me. I said to her, they just kept the copper inside the building in the middle of the place they wouldn't get robbed so much. If they didn't keep the copper outdoors in big open containers with the word copper painted on them in giant letters, they probably wouldn't even need a guard. But they do those things, so I feel as though I am possibly in mortal fucking danger. There was a massive thunderstorm. I was a new father and I was worried that the copper would attract the lightning and that I would die if I happened to be passing by. My boss and the client agreed to let me avoid going near the copper for the duration of the storm. But lightning never did strike the yard that night. You thought that I was talking about a ghost or something, huh? Got ya. No, that wasn't until later, when I was on my regular shift. I went in on a Saturday afternoon at 2pm. As per usual, I did my patrol that afternoon. I fed the junkyard cat some tuna, as per usual. 
There was something unusual in the yard, however. In between two of my checkpoints lay a small refrigerator and what looked like a giant pocket watch the size of a wall clock. I didn't like the feeling of being around them. There was this orange and white kitten who used to follow me around for a while after tuna time. I named him Rebel because he was the only one of the junkyard cats who would get close enough to me besides his mum. He got really close. Never close enough for me to pet him. He'd run if I tried, so I stopped trying. He was following me that afternoon as I was passing by the refrigerator and clock. I stopped there. Being around those things scared me. I couldn't admit it then, and I can barely admit it now. I hate the idea of admitting that I'm afraid, and being afraid of inanimate objects for no discernible reason is the height of humiliation. That's why I decided in that moment to inspect the objects and reassure myself that there was nothing to be afraid of. I was so steadfast in my resolve that I wasn't sure why I was still standing there several feet away. What do you think, Rebel? I asked the kitten standing near me. Unsurprisingly, he didn't answer. An icebox and an old clock, I said dismissively as I walked away without laying a hand on the objects. I continued to feign indifference towards the fridge and clock throughout the afternoon. It wasn't until shortly after dark that I no longer needed to pretend. There were voices in the yard that night. That wasn't out of the ordinary. I'd often have to confront the addicts, the homeless, the thieves, the hooligan teenagers, and on occasion, the thieving, drug-addicted, homeless teenage hooligans. <laughs> These guys versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I smell a franchise. <laughs> the encounters were usually very casual and respectful. I find an intruder and say, Sir, miss, this is private property. I'm going to have to escort you out. At that particular site, that worked all but one time. A young man who I caught trying to steal the battery from a forklift in broad daylight charged at me with a pry bar. I picked up a rebar and ran straight back at him while screaming like a crazy person. If you're thinking that I shared that bit only to illustrate that I don't scare easily, you are correct. <laughs> I followed the voices back and forth on my patrols for hours that night. I couldn't catch where they were. It sounded like two men whispering, so I assumed that I was dealing with very sneaky and clever thieves. The yard was a sort of U-shape. There were walls all around. There was a building to which I did not have access to in the middle and high walls all around. But there was scrap everywhere. Anytime I lost the voices, I would try to worm through the junk to see where they'd lost me. I was doing my best not to collapse onto the ground and throw a toddlerish tantrum as I squeezed my body between two stacks of pallets and made my way back to my car to sit and sulk like a grown man does when he is outsmarted when I heard the voices again. I had them this time. The voices were coming from near the pile of car bumpers, which I guess was somehow recyclable. No, not the pile near the entrance gate. Not the one by the mobile container full of copper which had copper, i.e. come and steal this written on its sides in bright orange letters. It was the pile underneath the solar powered yard light. I had them, and by God, I was going to use all of the power granted to me by the bottom tier security company for which I worked and the yard owner who couldn't just buy a fucking dog to very politely ask them to leave. I approached the bumper pile slowly, mighty flashlight in hand, and saw nothing. But I still heard the men whispering. I circled around the mass of junk bumpers, anxiously awaiting the moment that these intruders realised that I had outsmarted them and prepared themselves for a stern asking of when finally, I saw that I was back where I started. I circled the whole thing and I didn't see them, but I could still hear them. It was at that moment that I realised that the voices weren't saying anything, not in any language that I know. Uh, you can't be here? It was quiet for a few seconds, or minutes, I don't know. It got quiet after I spoke. The silence was eventually broken by a tumbling sound and a very unmanly yelp by yours truly as the bumper pile fell and three, yes I counted, of them flew out in my direction. One from the middle, one from the bottom, and one from the top shot towards me like daggers as I jumped backwards and landed flat on my ass. I sat there with aforementioned ass and hands on dirt until I caught my breath and felt confident that I could pretend the whole thing didn't happen. After what felt like an eternity, I pushed myself up off of the ground and dusted off my uniform. It was gravity plus cats times birds, minus the statue of John Wayne on every street corner that made that happen, right? Because I'm an American, and this is America, goddammit, and we aren't afraid of anyone. That's just science, yeah? Except maybe, nah, because I still felt really uneasy, and I didn't want to look to my right. I also didn't want my kids to find out that I was afraid, which I was sure they somehow would have, so I glanced a bit that way. There was no way, absolutely no way that I could see what I saw and be where I was. That's why I told myself. However, the only person who lies to me worse than my youngest daughter is me, so I didn't believe that asshole. I yanked my eyes away from my shoes and saw that I was standing right next to an icebox and an old clock. I'd been trying so hard to stay away from that area that it was actually a little difficult to believe that I'd got so caught up in chasing invisible intruders that I didn't even realise that I was there. 
No, nobody. Fuck no. No way. Nope. No. I remember exactly what I said when I saw that refrigerator was open and the clock's face was on the ground. I was actually scared beyond fear. Despite the chill running up my spine, I had to go and see that this wasn't real. I stomped toward that old refrigerator and got my hands all over it. I looked it over inside and out and I found nothing unusual, except for the fact that I was trembling the entire time and I couldn't stop. I glanced over at the bumpers near me every now and then, the ones that were blown over by an isolated gust of wind that I couldn't hear or feel and that affected nothing else. They were very still, as I always knew that they would be. There were also no voices, because they never were, and I was just sleep deprived or hungry or something, obviously. I moved on to the clock. That's when Rebel showed up again. He popped up out of nowhere onto the nearby concrete block and stared at me, as was typical. Nothing here, Rebel, I said to the cat, and definitely not as a way to reassure myself. Not at all. Just an old... What the fuck? I dropped the clock and ran away. Rebel ran alongside me towards for a second or two when I broke for my car. I lost sight of him before I made it to my little safe place, but I thought that was interesting. It was like he and I were human and cat bros. Oh, yeah, you probably want to know what made me freak out. The hands on the clock were spinning. They were just going crazy. That probably doesn't seem too spooky, but it scared the hell out of me. You had to be there to feel the fear. You may not have been, but someone else was and someone else felt it. The next week, I saw that the clock was still near where it had been before, but it looked as though it had been bashed in with a hammer. The refrigerator was tossed over the east wall. The lesson that we can all learn from this is that you should not be a bloody security guard. And that is the end of that one. And this was written by another security guard. I will leave the link to this story down below from yourghoststories.com if you want to go and check it out. But I could never be a security guard because like you mentioned in the story, the, there is a lot of cliche stories and recollections online from night security guards and people who work graveyard shifts in actual graveyards and there is always spooky things happening whether or not that is because you're just in a creepy setting so you picture creepy things going on or if there are actual ghost encounters I have no idea but regardless that would have absolutely terrified me not only being there sounds freaky but then having car bumpers pretty much thrown at you having these certain objects give you really uncomfortable feelings and then when you do actually check them out after being scared by something happening they're then doing weird stuff like the clock spinning oh no I couldn't picture that I would be absolutely terrified but that is everything for this week thank you so so much for listening today you guys are going to have to let me know what you thought about this story you can do this by heading over to my Facebook page or you can leave a comment on my YouTube channel or head on over to the Reddit page it is completely up to you and like I mentioned earlier feel free to drop me your own scary stories I would absolutely love to read them out and as well if you want to keep up with me in the meantime you can head on over to my Instagram which is just at Alien Queen Meg and apart from that I will catch you in my next one. Stay spooky, guys.